Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Silburn Show. And of course, we have Charles Curran, who is joining us today again for part two. Welcome to The Silburn Show. I'm sure you enjoyed part one of my interview with Charles Curran, but before we go into part two, let's talk briefly about implicit bias. Implicit bias refers to the attitudes or stereotypes that affect our understanding, actions, and decisions in an unconscious manner. That is to say, we are not even aware we have this bias. If you were ever to start a conversation with a black entrepreneur or a black business owner on the support they receive from their local communities, let alone black people in their local communities, more often than not, they will tell you very little to none. It would seem that we as consumers, black consumers, when deciding whether to spend our hard-earned income either at a black-owned business or any other business, we choose any other business. Whereas, if you look to any other minority group, business in any community, they are subject to outpouring support from their own ethnic group. And the truth of the matter is this, if we do not support our own, then who will? Answer that question. We here at the Silburn Show are definitely not the first to bring this up and shall not be the last. This has been an ongoing conversation for years and while the simmering conversation has led to websites such as webuyblock.com and myafricanbuy.com where there should be an outpouring of support from the black consumer world over, I dare you to ask a black business owner and they will say, that support by many standards has been seen and felt to be lacking. It would seem we do not support our own and I'll go as far as to say the mentality of the black consumer is that of an implicit racial bias towards black owned business. So the question becomes, why? Black consumer and black business owners alike, let's keep this conversation going. While rooting out the cause will not be instantaneous, if we keep the conversation going, maybe, yes, maybe, just maybe we'll bring awareness and a change in mentality that leads to an ever growing community of black owned business. I'd like to hear your opinion on the root and cause of this and I encourage you to take a minute for introspective assessment and are you the subject to this same bias? Share your comments below or on Twitter with the hashtag TV. and ladies and gentlemen, enjoy Charles Curran part two. Charles, I'm glad you stayed with us and you didn't run away and on one of your high level consultancy training. <laughs> 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 We've got him on the right here. We're gonna keep him for the time that he can because it's important that we capture some key nuggets. That's the most important thing, capturing some key nuggets that can revolutionize and transform our lives. That's what this show is all about. Not just entertaining, inspiring, motivational, educational, and entertaining. Of course, I'll entertain. I'll do like a rap later, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> so let's revert back to my opening segment, Charles, where I mentioned, and I'd like to hear your opinion on the, the matter as, as a people, black people, are we subject to this implicit racial bias towards black owned businesses? And while it's too large a topic to cover, of course, in this show, how do we go about identifying the root cause and change that mentality within our own ethnic group? That's very deep, Silbon. Mm. That's um, why I have you on the chair, Charles. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, you know, it is not so easy to. Mm dissect. Yes. There are several reasons that comes to mind, mm -hmm. but what I would like to interject very quickly is that statement is not entirely true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that is a sweeping generalization of yes. the reality uh, mm -hmm. of what is actually happening. But let me begin by saying this, the great Desmond Tutu. Mm -hmm. The leadership expert, Warren Bennis, who died 2014, in his book, Leadership for a Lifetime, I found it very interesting when he quoted Desmond Tutu. Mm -hmm. Now, after, I mean, at the post the apartheid regime in South Africa, mm -hmm. Desmond Tutu got on a flight. This is very interesting, mm -hmm. caught my attention. Yes. He got on a flight, I don't know where they were flying to, and he said as he walked into the airplane, he noticed two black pilots. Mm. And he smiled to himself. A smile of satisfaction. Yes. 
Yeah, and he went to his seat and took his seat. As the plane began to fly, he said the plane hit turbulence. And it was such a terrible turbulence that he found himself subconsciously mm. saying he wished there were white pilots flying the plane. Mm. He said the minute that thought crossed his mind, he said he was so ashamed and he was so embarrassed. Here it is, we finally got freedom. Mm -hmm. And I don't even have faith in my own. Mm. But you can under understand his conditioning and why he thought that. When I found it yes. so gratifying <clears throat> that they chose to express that thought, he said he began mm. to cry. Mm. You see, there are black people today, forget the U.S., mm. okay, where you don't even need to talk about because yes. you have the most amazing successes in the U.S. Mm. Forget Africa. If you think Nigeria, you have some of the most amazing power players mm. from, in Nigeria, punching way above their weights that will, I mean, um, dazzle you. There's, mm. I mean, ni there, are, there are huge players mm. in Nigeria. So let's leave that. Let's talk about the UK, blacks yeah. in the UK. Yeah. That's really the issue and that's the question. Yes. Okay. Over here, I guess for a time, it was not being satisfied with the offerings mm. of their fellow black uh, person or black players. Yes. Going to a white accountant, going to a Jewish accountant or a Jewish mm. lawyer, thinking they stand in a better position mm. to help you when you find yourself in trouble. I have spoken about this quite a lot yeah. at various events. If you choose to go to a Caucasian lawyer because you want to use a particular person, mm -hmm. I understand that, no problem mm -hmm. with that at all. Similar with your accountant, your lawyer, whomever. But if you are going to them because you believe they are better mm -hmm. than your fellow black person, mm -hmm. I have an issue with that. Yes. Are you, you following me? Mm -hmm. Because you're free to choose who you want to work with. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to them at the expense of a black person because you think the black person is not capable mm -hmm. or good enough, then I have a problem with that. Because we have mm -hmm. brilliance yes. in the community. I can tell you that yeah. now. Whether it's in the legal uh, field or in the accounting field mm -hmm. or in the uh, financial field, investment, you name it. Yes. We have amazing players. You may not know mm -hmm. them, but that's not to say that they're not, they're not there. there. I happen yes. to know a lot. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you follow? So I guess the issue right now is talking about the lower level um, uh, Tier. shopping team going mm -hmm. to hair, uh, going to shops where you can pick up uh, hair cream and uh, weave mm -hmm. on and all that kind of business. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that the people who dominate those specific industry have done their research mm -hmm. and they have opened up big industries mm -hmm. compared to the small uh, shop uh, corner yeah. for, that the black person has created. So yes. in terms of appeal mm. and price uh, uh, competitiveness, they have found it most, more cost effective to go to a lot of those Asian shops. Yes. Let's be very honest. The Asian shops are more inviting. They have mm. a huge array, a huge variety mm. of products on display. And prices, more and prices are more competitive because mm. they buy more in bulk compared to the black shop. Yes. Now, people are doing, there are a lot of black people doing something about it, mm -hmm. all right? But what I would not say is do not patronize yes. other businesses. I would not say that, yes, all yes. right? But ensure a part of your money is recycled in the black community mm -hmm. because you owe it to your community to ensure it is lifted up, Yes. all right? It is supported. And I, ch I choose to do that. Yes. yes. Okay. I, ch I choose to do that. And a lot of times I challenge them when I get there mm. if the service is terrible. And I say, you must improve your service. We are mm. living in a competitive world right now. Yes. If you don't improve your service, you're going to go out of business. Yes. Some like it, some don't like it. But you've got to drop that thought in your mind. So therefore, the, the, the different tier, you've got the tier at the top, the tier at the bottom, the tier at the top whereby they're all existing, but at the bottom level, there need to be a stepping up. That's correct. And what would be the key ingredient to step that up? Well, hey, how do you, how do you <laughs> create awareness? Yes. Listen, I've yes. thought about this. How do I get a lot yeah. of the 
those on the streets to read? Mm. How do I get them to read a bit more? How do I get them to yeah. go to the libraries? How yeah. do I get them to research information? Hey, if you have the answer to that, tell me, because I've been trying for a long time to but, find the but, answer to that. Well, I had, I, had a, I had a couple of shows which were on recently about some immigration issues. And, yeah. uh, and the start of the show was the commercial with, about an immigration firm. Yes. And the guest was the same person on the chair. And I got a few calls from persons asking me for the person's number. The person's number was at the start. Yes. The person's number was at the end. Very good. At the same time. Very good. Where persons could have seen. But you're right about that reading factor. And, uh, and I think, the, put it this way, television yes. was programmed. That the program, I say television was because it's like television is sort of fading out now. We're, the programming factor. But now what we have is the internet craze with social network whereby the, time, the, the, the span of concentration and depth is sometimes not there. And I call it, it's not socializing persons on another level. So that depth, that depth intellect, intellectualization of certain things, the ideological factors is lacking. Yeah. And therefore yeah. one needs to step up to that plate. Yeah. Use social network, I always say. Use the tools. But don't let it consume you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. See, but here's what I'll say mm. about um, this particular issue. I, I always like to paraphrase mm. by saying we must not. Yes. This generation of black people mm. are the most financially astute, mm -hmm. are the most traveled, mm -hmm. are the most educated, mm -hmm. are the most enlightened, are the most brand conscious and sophisticated. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, the most educated mm -hmm. group in the US. Yes. Guess who? The most educated group in the US, um, immigrant group. Nigerians. Yes. Nigerians, right? More educated than most of the Americans. Wow. Right? It's been celebrated all over the place from some of the best Ivy League institutions in the U.S. graduating powerful mm. black Nigerians. So what I like to say is this. At the same time we're having some of these issues yes. we're talking about, there is another set Which is of <laughs> blacks rising. And it wow. fills me with joy. Wow. It sets my heart ablaze mm. because I see them. Do you follow me? Mm. In the circles I move in, I see punching way above your weight. That's powerful. You, you, the key word you mentioned yeah. is the circle. Yes. So, so when someone speaks on something, it all depends on the circle. Yes. And also the eyes that they can see. Charles, thanks for that. Um, on the same topic, then should black businesses be so reliant on support from their own communities? Or should we not look outwards and create appeal towards our products and services aim at a wider variety of consumer. And if so, how do we go about doing that, even though I know it's happening? Yeah. Uh, both. Mm. Let's, let's be honest. It's a global world today. Yeah. You know, you got to think about how to, it's a borderless world, how to reach the most <coughs> yeah. clients or the most customers. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, yeah. you should be able to depend mm. on your own mm. uh, supporting you. Yeah. I, I say that on the backdrop um, of America and what's happening, uh, Black Lives Matters movement, not going to get political here, but there's also this drive now, this quest about uh, buying our own, the Black Pound, uh, Black Wall Street. Uh, it can be seen as being very inclusive to a certain extent, whereby one is now shutting down, closing ranks. And there's a guy in America was in front of a panel discussion where they want to be revolution. He said, how many of you own your land? A few persons put their hand up. How many of you um, do, uh, what should I say, own businesses? A few hands went up. How many of you own radio stations? A few hands went up. How many of you play, uh, do karate and go to the shooting range? He said, you're not ready for a revolution. You're part of the system, yeah. <laughs> you know? Because yeah. it, it's like the ingredients is not there. But at the same time, you wonder why the ingredient is not there for one group while it is there for another group. Uh, is the level playing field not level? Well, I'm a citizen of the world. I'm obviously, I'm, 
blackmail first. Yes. Uh, but nonetheless, I believe in humanity. Yes. I believe in everybody. Mm. Um, I have to. Yes. Because that's my orientation. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Nonetheless, we are speaking about a particular race right yes. now, the yes. black race. Yes. And clearly, I have opinions mm -hmm. about what is going on, you know. Um, I, I think the issue, education, enlightenment, yeah. will help a great <clears throat> deal, okay? Because yeah. one of the things it does is it, it accelerates us as a people to another level of impact. Yes. And one of the best ways I believe we can do that be, besides education is through what I call the art of work. Mm -hmm. It's getting to the point where you do pure work. Mm -hmm. You learn to do work to such a, uh, such a brilliant level, mm -hmm. a brilliant degree. Mm -hmm. Because when you, when you become a people recognized for brilliant work, mm -hmm. The Chinese don't have to scream to be recognized. Mm. Think about it. Yeah. They don't have to shout and carry placards, go on the streets yes. to be recognized. They know who they are. They think they are the best. It's the opinion, mm. but they think they are the best. Mm. I know blacks who think they are the best, mm. okay? And because they think they are the best, they are not looking at stereotypes or prejudices mm. or racism. They are focused on being the best, the best. that they can be. As you become the best, of course, you create avenues mm. for others to flow. You mm. and every other black person watching, mm -hmm. stop talking. You know, I, I, I'm done. I, I don't, I, <laughs> you know, I'm not into this talking stuff. Yeah. People blind will love to talk about all this kind of stuff all yeah. the time. I'm yeah. not into that stuff. Prove it. Yes. Just do it. I mean, prove it. Yeah. Go out there and be the best. Mm. And you see, Obama didn't become president because mm. of his oratorical skills or his good mm. looks. He had content. Mm. He had something to say. He had mm. something to offer. Yes. Stop talking. Black this, black that, mm. black all day long. Mm. You know, black people love to talk. Mm. Do, you, do you follow? Mm. Uh, and I'm not in that game. Mm. I want to see black people doing. Mm. Let that be the talking. That's, you see, because your work speaks. Mm. And you see, when you excel, most of the time they don't see your color. Yes. They see your brilliance. Mm -hmm. All right? What's the name of the doctor, the guy that wrote the book Gifted Hands, uh, that ran for... Uh, um, ben Carson. Ben Carson. Dr. Carson, yes. Ben Carson's work spoke. Mm -hmm. Obama's work spoke. Oh. Colin Powell's work spoke. Condoleezza Rice's work spoke. Mm -hmm. I could name... I could go Oprah Winfrey. I could name them. Mm -hmm. Their work spoke. spoke. Work ethics. Do you follow? Yeah. You didn't see them on the streets going on strike, carrying placards. Yeah. Their work spoke, and they have yeah. left more powerful legacies than yeah. all the demonstrations yeah. you see on the streets. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that, that is something I just want to zero in about the power of the work that will speak. There are many ways to speak, Charles. That's what you are saying, isn't it? Many ways to speak. This is why I, anything I have done, mm -hmm. you will speak to any of my previous chairmen, bosses, mm -hmm. CEOs, they will tell you Charles gave 110%, if that exists. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I am creating avenue for the next black person that was going to come up. I mm -hmm. wanted them to have the same opportunity. Yes. I didn't want to go soil the road, soil the way, yes. so that the next time they see a black person, mm -hmm. their remembrance or their memory is a negative one. Wow. All right? So yeah. let your work speak. Not all the talking. Mm -hmm. Let it speak by virtue of your performance. Let mm -hmm. your performance speak. Yes. That's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful, Charles. Nigeria. I'm yeah. talking to Nigeria now. Yeah. Nigeria recession, recession very quickly. Yeah. One of Africa's fastest and largest growing economies on hand with South Africa. The continent as a whole has been able to buffer the effects of 2008 and continue to grow amidst economic uncertainty and is often touted as an economic powerhouse, the rise, which you have alluded to earlier. But we know in economics, downturns in one economy often result in or are indicative of an impending downturn across a region. Nigeria's current recession and significant currency fluctuations seen in South Africa 
what does it mean for these respective economies and in your opinion what will be the effects on the continued growth of the continent at large well africa as you know is the um i, I think i mean it's been called the dark continent uh, it's actually not a dark continent, mm. it's a light continent, because yes. it's full of light. Yes. Uh, it's a continent whose time has come, okay? We have gone through the most difficult periods mm -hmm. of our existence as a continent yes. for the various reasons, which I'm not prepared to go into yes. right now. Yes. Uh, however, I am qualified to speak more about Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria in 2014 became the largest economy in Africa, mm -hmm. okay, outpacing or superseding South Africa, okay. Uh, but Nigeria is going through a recession at the moment. You know mm -hmm. there's a new administration yes. right now, a year and a, and a quarter, a new president mm -hmm. was elected. The challenge with Nigeria, of course, is that Nigeria went through a period of what I call largess, mm. excesses that will make your eyes water. Yes. Okay. Uh, Nigerians live large. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they blew a lot of money like there was no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The new administration has come in and they are trying to create institutions in that country. Mm -hmm. The issues of Nigeria is too deep, uh, Silvan, mm, yeah. all right? It's too deep. We discuss it all the time, yes. and most of the time I run away from the discussion, <laughs> all right? Because I yes. just resort to prayer, yes. right? Because i just asking God to intervene, yes. right? My challenge right now with Nigeria is not so much the recession, because yes. nations or countries go through the recession. Yes. Okay, we, we, we right in this country. Actually, they normally say recession is a time where it breeds entrepreneurs. No question, because the mm. best, a lot of, most wealth is created yeah. during periods of recession. Mm -hmm. So recession is not the issue. The challenge right now, of course, is having the right individuals to steer the economy mm -hmm. through this turbulent period, mm -hmm. all right, to help the economy out of recession. Mm -hmm. So my, as a matter of fact, 10 days ago, I was sitting with a very influential man, mm -hmm. one of the advice, one of the closest persons to the president. Mm -hmm. And I told him, all this talk I'm tired of it. Yes. Where is the action? He said, wait and see. And he gave me a timeline. Mm -hmm. He said, wait and see what is going to happen. All these things you're mm -hmm. telling me about Charles is already at hand. Mm -hmm. Because the people are dying right now yes. from starvation. Yes. All right? I mean, if the wealthy are crying, let alone, what, what about the poor people? Mm -hmm. Out of pure starvation, they don't have three meals a day for a lot mm. of these poor people to eat right now. Is that mm. desperate? I'm yes. telling you right now, is yes. that desperate? So the situation right now, my main concern is who do we have from the brilliant minds in mm. that country who have been allowed, mm -hmm. given access or given the opportunity mm -hmm. to come in and say, this is what we need to do in periods like yes, this yes. to get us out of this mess. Mm -hmm. Not bringing people who are not qualified to do it, mm -hmm. thus extending the pain and the, the pain, suffering. Yeah, yeah. That is my issue right now, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I've been told is I am going to see, I'm going to be proven wrong, and I'm mm -hmm. waiting to be proven wrong yes. okay, any moment from now. Mm -hmm. So going to recession is not a new thing, yes. all right? I don't know why people make a lot of song and dance about mm -hmm. it. Every nation goes to recession, mm -hmm. all right? Japan, how many times have they gone through mm. recession? Italy, right? Mm. The US, Britain, right yes, here where I live. Yes. So that's not an issue. But we have Mark Carney, mm -hmm. for example. Who knows what to do? Who knows if, who has a plan A and a yes, plan B? Yes. And knows what to resort to to jump yeah, study. Yeah. That's my issue. We need the same equivalent type mm. individuals to help do the same in Nigeria. Yes. Listen, one out of every five black persons mm. you meet in the world is a Nigerian, mm -hmm. one out of five. So it's a massive nation, a nation of about 180 million yes. people. So the success of Nigeria mm -hmm. is critical yes. for every, for Jamaicans, for Barbadians, mm -hmm. for Dominicans, mm -hmm. for whomever. Yes. The success of Nigeria is critical. That's powerful. Because the leading black nation in the world. Yes. And Charles, listen, as you rightly said, we could go on forever. Yes. Now, before we go, Charles, um, what is your key word, key mantra that drives you? I know you're a God-fearing man, but what is that key word 
the uh, inspiration, the driving force. Yes. Something that we can go with. You know, for me, mm. this is what I resort to all the time and a fervent belief of mine. Mm. And that is the fact that all things are possible mm. with God mm. to the person who believes. Mm. You see, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. okay? Um, wherever I go, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of <laughs> yes. the gospel of our Lord mm. Jesus Christ mm. because it's the power of God to save mm. the world mm. for those who choose to believe. Mm. The issues and problems I've been through in my life, mm. if I did not have God, I couldn't mm. be sitting on this chair, yes. Sheldon, and talking to you. Yes. He got me out of this situation smelling of roses and mm. repositioned mm. me and mm. that is available to everybody mm. so all things are possible, possible with God for to those who choose to believe. to believe and Charles that is also powerful because every other religion also stand up and say who they believe in that's correct so therefore one should not have a shame of the gospel Amen. of Jesus Christ because the power of God unto salvation Ladies and gentlemen, this is just a pause for Charles, Kieran, because we're going to do this some other time. But Charles, I want to thank you so much for joining us. But it's been such show. a pleasure as well as a privilege. Yes. Good yes. to see you. Pleasure You're is looking mine. good too. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank okay, you. Buddy. Awesome. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, to find out more about Charles, Kieran, you can check out our website and also you'll see details of his website below. Thank you to our viewers for joining us and remember to share, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Silver and TV, as well as our social media network platforms and all other platforms, Instagram and Twitter, hashtag Silver and Seville. See you next time and God bless you. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like and don't forget to comment, but first subscribe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me encourage you to keep watching. The Silbon Sidal Show. This man is going places, and with all our collective help and assistance, we're going to create another beast in the entertainment and talk show world. He deserves it, he's worked hard for it. Keep liking the Silbon Sidal Show and keep uh, watching on YouTube and all the various channels. Okay, thank you very much.